Welcome to the layer by layer overview of Psalm 112. A way to remember this psalm is with the phrase, the one who fears the Lord. The one who fears the Lord becomes like the Lord. And this psalm provides a picture of what that looks like. First, we'll look at the structure. The psalm has two main sections. First is a section introducing the person who fears the Lord. The key word is fear, shown here underlined. This person receives abundantly from the Lord. The second section describes how this person is fearless. The key word again is fear, but here the person fears nothing else when he trusts in the Lord. He is first introduced as generous, which is one characteristic of the one who fears nothing else. When he trusts in the Lord, he's both generous and righteous. This results in blessing for the upright, but the wicked see and melt in fear. Connections between the sections are shown with colored text. Note the two sections begin similarly with happy is the one and fortunate is the one shown in purple. Mentions of generosity and righteousness appear in both sections, indicated by the blue text. Imagery of the sun, whether it's light or heat, end both sections, indicated by the yellow text. The one subsection without a parallel is where the person fears nothing else. This helps identify the central point of the psalm. The one who fears the Lord will fear nothing else. It's helpful to look at the emotional tone of the psalm as a whole. This psalm clearly expresses admiration for this man who fears the Lord and is blessed abundantly by him. In both sections, this admiration is joined by hope for a time of righteousness and abundance when the wicked are no longer present. We'll now go through the psalm verse by verse. Superscription. Praise Yah. This superscription was likely added to the psalm after its initial composition, when it was included in the book of Psalms. It marks this as a psalm of praise. The reason for praising the Lord is always found in the covenant relationship. Psalm 111, the psalm just before this, has many parallels with this psalm. In Psalm 111, the praise celebrates the great deeds the Lord accomplished. The greatest praise is given to the commandments that enable his people to live in covenant with him. The covenant provides the motivation for praise. Here, in Psalm 112, the praise is also based on the covenant relationship. This psalm praises the one who keeps the commands given through the covenant, the one who fears the Lord and delights in his commands. Happy is the one. This first section introduces the one who fears the Lord. Verse 1. Happy is the one who fears the Lord, who delights very much in his commands. Similar to Psalm 111, this verse begins with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, also indicating the start of an alphabetic acrostic, where each successive line begins with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Acrostics in Hebrew indicate a poem discussing a given topic from many sides, until the complete alphabet gives a complete picture. The topic of Psalm 112 is the one who fears the Lord, who answers to the call of Psalm 1 and truly delights in his commands. Just like Psalm 1, we will see much imagery in Psalm 112 that traditionally belongs to the Israelite king, who is supposed to be the model Israelite, delighting in the Lord's law and fulfilling all his commands. The purpose for the royal imagery will become clearer as we progress through the psalm. Verse 2. His offspring will be great on the earth, a generation of upright people who will be blessed. 
Success in the ancient world was a combination of prosperity in one's lifetime and continuation of a family line. Even before addressing the individual's own prosperity, the psalm emphasizes the long-term success of the man. His offspring will be great, as in known for qualities such as physical strength, power, bravery, skill, wealth, or good character. The term offspring often applied to kings, providing another hint of royalty. These offspring will not only be great, but they will be morally upright, continuing the pattern of their ancestor, this man who fears the Lord. The result will be blessings, receiving even more goodness from the Lord. Wealthy and Righteous The next segment shows how the Lord responds to the one who fears him. Verse 3 Immense wealth is in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Immense wealth is associated especially with kings in the Old Testament. Wise and successful kings gain that wealth in a godly fashion, and the wealth therefore serves as evidence precisely of this man's wisdom and success. That wisdom and success derive from something much deeper, however, his righteousness. In Psalm 111, the word forever was crucial to understanding the significance of this same line which occurs in both Psalms. The Lord's past deeds were indeed glorious and majestic, but his righteousness, his pattern of behavior in accordance with the requirements of divine law, is not restricted to these past acts. His righteousness stands forever. When the righteousness of this man is also declared to stand forever, we begin to see the fuller picture. This man who fears the Lord, delighting in his commands, is becoming just like the Lord. The responsibility of a king was to establish and maintain justice and righteousness in society as a representative of the Lord. Here in Psalm 112, that role, which was at one time restricted to the king, may be made available to the entire community. They too could become like the Lord. Imagery fit for a king may be available to more than just kings. The king was to be the model Israelite, which means Israelites could strive to be just like their kings. Verse 4. A light for the upright has risen in the darkness, merciful and compassionate and righteous. The sun was a common image for righteousness and justice in the ancient world. In the same way, the sun had dominion over the day and responsibility to provide light and warmth during the day. So the king had dominion over his kingdom and the responsibility to maintain justice in the kingdom. Justice is the precondition for peace and well-being, much like light and heat are the preconditions for flourishing on the earth. The wise and just king is therefore like a light for the upright, which has risen in the darkness, dispelling injustice and bringing peace. Just like in verse 3, this verse also repeats part of Psalm 111 exactly. He is, like the Lord, merciful and compassionate and righteous. The royal imagery is particularly clear in 2 Samuel 23, where it says in verses 3 and 4, When one rules justly over men, ruling in the fear of God, he dawns on them like the morning light, like the sun shining forth on a cloudless morning. This is the only place in the Old Testament in which a human is described as merciful and compassionate. This man, like the kings of old, has become like the Lord himself. 
fearless. The second section describes how the man who fears the Lord becomes fearless in the face of all dangers that normally afflict humans. Fortunate is the one. This section begins similarly to the first, introduced by another outcry of admiration. Happy is the one is now paralleled by fortunate is the one. Verse 5. Fortunate is the one who lends generously, who manages his affairs with justice. Not only does this man deserve to be admired for what God gives to him, but he is also considered fortunate for what he gives to others. As mentioned in verse 3, this generosity extends to the realm of finances. This man lends generously, following the requirements of the law, as outlined in Exodus 22 and Deuteronomy 15. Generosity is a concrete expression of fearing the Lord. Managing affairs with justice again recalls Psalm 111, where it is the Lord's deeds that are faithful and just. The same character of the lawgiver is now mirrored in the law follower. He conducts his own affairs with the same justice he finds in the law. Verse 6 For he will never waver. The righteous one will be remembered forever. Many people seem to have righteousness when circumstances are good, but few continue to do so when circumstances are difficult. This man, however, will never be so greatly affected by negative circumstances to the point where he might waver with worry. This man is secure. Since he is a righteous man, he will be remembered just like the Lord's commandments are in Psalm 111, forever. We see here how fearing the Lord leads to the security of never wavering, which is illustrated in his abundant generosity. Trusting in the Lord. The next segment is the central point of the psalm. The one who fears the Lord will fear nothing else. Verse 7. He will not be afraid of bad news. His heart is confident, trusting in the Lord. There's a miniature chiasm with verses 7 and 8, with, at the very middle, the words, trusting in the Lord. It is trusting in the Lord that leads to all these things, not needing to fear any kind of news, even bad news, and having a confident heart. While the mentions of generosity convey how this man interacts with others, in verse 7 we see a glimpse into his own life. For a king, bad news was often military conflict, as suggested by the adversaries in verse 8. Bad news might come and go, but he is not afraid. All he needs is to trust in the Lord, and he will be confident. Verse 8. His heart is encouraged. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. This is another instance where royal imagery is obvious, for it is kings who triumph over adversaries in the Old Testament. When enemies approach, it is not confidence in himself that causes a king not to worry, but rather his confidence in the certainty that he will receive the Lord's help whenever he needs it. Because he knows the Lord will help, he will not need to be afraid and seek the help of another nation or another god. Instead, he will remain fearless throughout the battle until he finally looks in triumph on his enemies. This man who fears the Lord is not spared difficult times. He is equipped to address difficult times and resolve them, resolving poverty by lending generously and resolving enemy attacks by triumphing over his adversaries. The chiasm with these two verses, 7 and 8, sets them apart poetically. This man will truly be fearless. Generous and righteous. 
The last subsection of this psalm shows what it looks like for a person to fear the Lord, first as he experiences it himself, and then as the wicked experience it. Verse 9. He has given freely to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will rise in honor. Once again, generosity to the poor sums up this man's relationship to those around him. He cares for them using his own resources. Such care demonstrates a righteousness that endures forever. Again, echoing Psalm 111, where God commanded the covenant forever. This man is carrying out the commandments of the covenant, resulting in blessings for the poor around him and the blessing of enduring righteousness for himself. This man increasingly resembles the God with whom he is in covenant. The horn is a symbol of strength and power, particularly associated with the Davidic dynasty. When he defeats his enemies or aids the poor, this man's horn will rise in honor, proclaiming the strength he has gained. Verse 10. The wicked person will see and become vexed. He will grind his teeth and waste away. The desire of the wicked will come to an end. The honor of one often comes at the expense of another. The honor of the righteous inevitably leads to the vexation of the wicked, who will realize that his wicked desires cannot be satisfied for much longer, as the wickedness is increasingly purged from the kingdom. To grind his teeth is an expression of hostility and derision, but it is futile. For all the wicked accomplishes is that he wastes away. The delight of the one who fears the Lord led to his devotion to the commandments and all the blessings that followed. For the wicked, however, desire will come to an end. The righteous person's desire leads to life and flourishing, not only for himself, but for many around him. The desire of the wicked, however, leads only to a miserable end. The pattern of Psalm 1 remains paradigmatic. The Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked perishes. Psalm 112 is an intricately woven song of praise for the man who fears the Lord, with powerful images that create first the picture of a king, and second, the picture of a king who has come to be just like the Lord. The acrostic holds all the images together like a careful mosaic. For the people celebrating this righteous person, who is much like a king of old, it would give them hope in a renewed line of David, who would restore righteousness and justice to the land forever. We will now read the entire psalm. Praise Yah! Happy is the one who fears the Lord, who delights very much in his commands. His offspring will be great on the earth, a generation of upright people who will be blessed. Immense wealth is in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. A light for the upright has risen in the darkness, merciful and compassionate and righteous. Fortunate is the one who lends generously, who manages his affairs with justice. For he will never waver. The righteous one will be remembered forever. He will not be afraid of bad news. His heart is confident, trusting in the Lord. His heart is encouraged. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. He has given freely to the poor his righteousness endures forever. His horn will rise in honor. The wicked person will see and become vexed. He will grind his teeth and waste away. The desire of the wicked will come to an end.
This has been the overview video for Psalm 112. Our goal in this video is to present a single, coherent interpretation of the psalm. Our exegetical issues video discusses other scholarly views, and our poetic features video explores the distinctively poetic nature of the psalm as Hebrew poetry. Please visit us at scriptura.world to learn more about our project, including more details of this psalm and how we came to this interpretation. Thank you.